The Center for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that 98% of Americans have a widespread deficiency of potassium. There's no other electrolyte that the body requires in as high of a dose as potassium. Let's get real about potassium. It's not just another electrolyte. It's the electrolyte that keeps your body running, your heart beating, and your nerves firing on all cylinders. Today, we're uncovering why this powerhouse mineral might just be the most important nutrient your body needs. Stick around. This could make all the difference for your nerves and your health. All right, health warriors, let's talk electrolytes. We hear about them all the time, potassium, magnesium, calcium, but here's the thing. Although they're all important, potassium is the MVP electrolyte, the one that's literally life or death when it comes to keeping your nerves firing and your heart beating. Did you know that your body needs 4,700 milligrams of potassium intake daily just to keep you healthy? There's no other nutrient that your body needs this much of to stay healthy. And believe it or not, it's the electrolyte, the mineral that's the most overlooked by most doctors. Why? Because potassium deficiency isn't easy to diagnose. Unlike other nutrients, potassium is mostly stored inside cells, not in the bloodstream. And a standard blood test only measures a tiny fraction of potassium circulating outside the cells. This means that levels can appear normal even when the body is running dangerously low. And by the time deficiency shows up in a blood test, symptoms could already be very severe, impacting your nerve health, your heart rhythm, and muscle function. Now, it may shock you to discover that the Center for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that 98% of Americans don't consume enough potassium leading to widespread deficiencies, which can start off mild and then escalate to a severe state. So let's get a better understanding of why potassium is so critical to the body. Potassium plays an essential role in both the peripheral nerves and the central nervous system made up of your brain and your spinal cord. What makes us so important is that it plays a key role in the process of nerve signaling. When you're low in potassium, nerves can't send signals properly. Your, your nerves may become overexcitable or they may struggle to fire a signal at all. This can result in symptoms like twitching or tremors, perhaps tingling or numbness, muscle cramps, spasms, and even muscle weakness or fatigue. In fact, your limbs may feel very heavy or you may find it very difficult to lift them at all. That's because potassium is essential for muscle contraction. A potassium deficiency can also cause your reflexes to become slow or delayed. Potassium is necessary for fast, coordinated nerve responses. When nerves aren't firing correctly, reflex responses may slow down. This can be dangerous, especially when you're driving. Low levels of potassium can also interfere with the repair and regeneration of your nerves because it can reduce blood flow to the peripheral nerves. This limits the body's ability to transport nutrients and oxygen to damaged nerves. This is a crucial part of nerve regeneration. But potassium goes far beyond the nervous system control. It also plays a key component in heart health. When levels of this electrolyte drop too low, it disrupts the normal heart rhythm and function, leading to arrhythmias, irregular heartbeat, palpitations, sensations of fluttering or pounding or skipped heartbeats. Low potassium can also slow down your heart rate, a condition known as bradycardia. Potassium deficiencies can also cause you to develop high blood pressure or potentially go into cardiac arrest where your heart suddenly stops beating. Research has shown that chronically low potassium levels are also associated with many conditions such as insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, kidney stone formation, osteopenia, and osteoporosis. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky because potassium deficiencies are notoriously difficult to detect through blood work. A large percentage of the population walks around unaware that they're deficient in this mineral. So it's essential to recognize the symptoms and pay attention to the warning signs. And you'll also want to be familiar with the factors that can deplete this mineral. By doing this, you can catch the deficiency long before your doctor can. 
So here are some of the most common causes of potassium deficiency. Okay, number one, a diet low in potassium rich foods. If you don't regularly eat foods like avocados, spinach, acorn squash, white beans, and sweet potatoes, chances are you're not consuming enough potassium. Now, I realize you might be missing out on some of the starchier foods because you're on a keto diet, but don't despair because you can get a lot of potassium from green leafy vegetables. However, the reality is that the average person only consumes at best one and a half cups of vegetables a day, which just isn't enough to supply your body's potassium demand. Then couple that with the fact that most processed foods are high in sodium, which can further deplete potassium. Eating too much processed salt increases the body's need for potassium. Sodium and potassium work together to balance fluids. So when sodium intake is high, potassium is often depleted faster. All right, on to number two, high levels of stress. Chronic stress elevates hormones like cortisol, which can increase potassium loss because it causes it to be excreted more rapidly through the kidneys. Okay, on to number three, dehydration. When you don't drink enough water, your electrolytes become concentrated, causing a larger loss of minerals like potassium. Proper hydration dilutes your urine, preventing high levels of potassium loss. Also, alcohol and caffeinated drinks like coffee and tea have a diuretic effect on the body, causing more mineral loss, including potassium. Next up, number four, medications. Many medications increase potassium loss through the urine. This includes medications such as diuretics like HCTZ or furosemide, certain blood pressure meds, corticosteroids like prednisone, and also laxatives. Okay, number five, bronchodilators for asthma or COPD. Medications like albuterol can cause potassium levels to drop. Number six, excessive sweating. Heavy sweating during intense exercise or in hot climates can deplete your potassium levels. On to number seven, various health conditions such as kidney disease, inflammatory bowel disorder, or irritable bowel syndrome and chronic diarrhea can all reduce the body's ability to absorb potassium from food. If you fall into any of these categories, you will definitely benefit by raising your dietary intake of potassium and also by taking a potassium supplement. Now, let's talk about how much potassium you need. Well, the RDA or the recommended dietary allowance shows that adult men over 19 should consume 3,400 milligrams of potassium daily, while women 19 and over should consume 2,600 milligrams. But here's the reality. We need a lot more potassium than what the RDA tells us. Remember, RDA numbers are based on the minimum amount of nutrients you need to stay alive, not to be healthy. So RDA numbers are far below the actual numbers for maintaining or restoring great health. So let's look at what the research shows. Studies reveal that the optimal daily potassium intake is between 4,000 and 4,700 milligrams to support optimal health. However, if you suffer from conditions like diabetes, peripheral neuropathy, heart disease, or even kidney stones, research shows that you need levels much higher than this. Now, some of you with chronic kidney disease may have heard that potassium is bad for your kidneys because they're already diseased or damaged and you should limit potassium rich foods. Well, that's not entirely correct. This only comes a, becomes a serious issue for those in stage four or five of kidney disease. Because the kidneys are operating at less than 29% function, they have difficulty excreting potassium from the body. Typically for stage three or lower of chronic kidney disease, you don't need to limit potassium rich foods unless your blood work shows elevated levels of potassium. Now, for those of you on potassium supplements, the average pill will only provide 99 milligrams of potassium per capsule. So you really need to turn to your diet to drastically increase potassium levels. Here's a list of potassium rich foods that you should be eating. First off, Avocado contains 975 milligrams of potassium for one medium-sized avocado. One cup of Swiss chard will have 961 milligrams. And beet greens contain 909 milligrams per cup, cooked. Acorn squash packs 896 grams per cup. 
And one cup of cooked spinach contains 839 milligrams of potassium. One cup of cooked navy beans packs a whopping 829 milligrams. And three ounces of cooked wild-caught salmon contains 683 grams of potassium. And let's not forget the nutrient-dense sweet potato. A medium sweet potato contains 541 milligrams. All right, health warriors, now you know. Potassium isn't just any mineral. It's the powerhouse behind your nerves, your heart, your muscles, and your energy. Imagine the difference it could make in your life if you met your body's true potassium needs. Imagine the improved healing in your peripheral nerves. The choice to thrive starts with you. So if you're ready to fuel up and take your health to the next level, hit that like button, subscribe for more essential health insights, and tap the bell to be notified to stay connected. Let's help more people reclaim their health. I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. There's no other electrolyte that the body requires in, a, in his... Blah, 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 blah. He's like, are we, are we filming, Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We're we gonna do this together? Yeah? It's like he knows when the camera's running. <laughs>